بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah the most gracious most merciful السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته in the previous episode we discussed one of the great bounties of Allah all glory be to him on us human beings and the rest of the forms of life on the surface of that planet and this bounty comes from the fact that Allah has given water the essence of life, this marvelous fluid, Allah has given it the capacity to merge without complete mixing, to meet without complete mixing. And we said the earliest understanding of this verse was the meeting of fresh and saline water. And when fresh water is debouched by rivers, into seas and oceans, we find that the fresh water, due to its less density, can float on top of the marine water for several hundreds of kilometers. And in this process, a fringe of brackish water is formed, and the free media can be three different environments for different forms of life. And nobody could dream of the fact that this can happen with marine waters, but only with photographing the oceans from outer space, scientists came to realize that adjacent bodies of water give different reflections in the photographing process, in different waves of light. And when they came down, they found that Actually, these two waters have completely different physical and chemical characteristics. With further investigation, scientists came to realize that due to the variation in the physical chemical characteristics of water, Allah has differentiated the vast water bodies on the surface of our planet into separate entities horizontally as well as vertically. And the wisdom behind that is that Allah, with this process, has prepared a multitude of environments for different forms of life. And this in itself can prove the magnificent work of Allah, or glory be to Him, can testify for His divine nature as the sole deity in this universe, in this cosmos without parallels, partners, or similars. And we read two previous verses that speak about the meeting of fresh water and saline water. And we had a verse in Surah Al-Furqan, And he, meaning Allah, all glory be to him, is the one who has merged the two seas, rivers and, and oceans. One is potable, sweet, and the other is highly saline, bitter. And yet, he, meaning Allah, all glory be to him, has made a barrier between them and restricted each of these environments as a special confinement. We also read in Surah Al-Fatir, وَمَا يَسْتَوِي الْبَحْرَانِ هَذَا عَذْبٌ فُرَاتٌ سَائِغٌ شَرَابُ وهذا ملح أجاج ومن كل تأكلون لحما طرية وتستخرجون حلية تلبسونها وترى الفلك فيه مواخرة لتبتغوا من فضله ولعلكم تشكرون and the two seas meaning rivers and oceans are not the same the one is potable sweet and pleasant to drink and the other is saline and bitter yet from each of the two environments you eat tender flesh and extract ornaments to wear and you see the ships blowing through it so that you may seek from his from Allah's bounty and that happily you may be thankful to Allah and this verse also in Surah Fatir speaks about the meeting of rivers and seas fresh and saline water the verse in Surah Ar-Rahman actually speaks about a different issue, which means 
the meeting of oceanic and oceanic waters, marine and marine water, and they don't mix as well, so that Allah can prepare a great multitude of environments for different forms of life. The verse reads, Maraj al-Bahraini al-Taqiyan, Baynahuma barzakhun la yabghiyan, Fabi'ayya alai rabbikuma tukadhiban, Yakhruju minhuma al-lu'luhu al-marjan, Fabi'ayya alai rabbikuma tukadhiban. He, meaning Allah, will glory be to him, has merged the two seas to meet between them, has mer Allah, all glory be to him, has merged the two seas to meet. Between them is a barrier. Neither can transgress. Neither of these different qualities of water can transgress over the other. Then, which is it of the great bounds of your Lord you, both humans and jinns, can deny. Out of each of which of these two environments come pearls and coral stones. And this is a very precise distinction between this verse and the two previously mentioned verses. The two previously mentioned verses speak about the meeting of fresh and saline waters. And Everybody can understand the difference in physical chemical characteristics of the two bodies so that they cannot mix. But this verse is speaking about two seas from both of which you can extract pearls and coral stones. And we know that both oyster pearls and coral reefs can only live in highly saline waters in warm to hot waters, in shallow waters. And that's why this verse in Surah Al-Rahman cannot speak about the meeting of fresh and saline waters. He's speaking about another case that even saline water, if there is a slight difference in the physical chemical characteristics of each, they can never mix. And we said that this is a great bounty from Allah all glory be to him, to multiply the environments to suit different forms of life which he has created. Then we come to Surah An-Naml, chapter number 27, verse number 61, which reads, أَمَّنْ جَعَلَ الْأَرْضَ قَرَارًا وَجَعَلَ خِلَالَهَا أَنْهَارًا وَجَعَلَ لَهَا رَوَاسِيَةً وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ حَاجِزًا أَإِلَاهٌ مَعَ اللَّهِ بَلْ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Allah, all glory be to him, is the one who has made the earth as a stable abode and has placed therein rivers and has established for it firm mountains and has set a barrier between the two seas. Is there any deity with Allah? Nay, but most of them know not. And here we have a different approach to the same scientific facts, that water, this fluid, which Allah has given it the capacity to dissolve the largest number of solids we know of. This water can meet without complete mixing. And the objective behind that is the multiplicity of environments in water media, so that every form of life can find the suitable environment in which it can live. He, means Allah, all glory be to him, is the one who has made the earth as a stable abode, another bounty from the many bounties of Allah. And we mentioned before that Allah has stabilized the earth, has made the earth a stable abode by the massive amount of iron he has placed into it. And this iron, as we mentioned before, came from outer space. It is of an extraterrestrial origin, came in massive quantities in exactly the same way we are receiving iron meteorites today, but in much larger quantities. And this iron, with the cosmic speed, penetrated the heap of ash, the state in which the protoplanet was. It did melt by the heat of settlement, and it fused that heap of ash, and 
distinguish it or segregate it or separate it into seven distinctive earths. With a big mass of iron in the internal structure of our planet has helped to minimize the wobbling of that planet as a result of its revolution around its own axis in front of the sun. Not only this, but Allah has also stabilized the outer rocky layer of the earth with mountains. The distribution of mountains on the surface of the globe, first earth, is actually a very important role in minimizing the wobbling of the earth around its own axis. So, who has made all this for you so that the earth can be an inhabitable environment? I will stop here because we are heading to a short break. And until we meet, I thank you for listening and greet you in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, mercy, and blessings be with you all. Presents over 100 million viewers at one of the largest peace conferences in the world, addressing a sea of spellbound spectators. Over 30 world renowned orators on Islam with credentials impeccable. The truth of Islam. Deen is your way of life. It is our duty, our obligation. By following the Quran and Sunnah, we will give the message to one and all. To one and all. With articulation exquisite. Read the book of Allah. Islam is the easy way, it's the simple way. Remind each other. The Muslim is not a source of harm for other people. Collaborate with the people. For good. This is the call of Islam. With the mission of spreading the truth of Islam. Do what you can to spread the word of Islam. Wherever we are, live like Muslims. Use your power. Allah is saying, why do you need anything else? This Quran is self-sufficient. The only book on the face of the globe, the Quran. How a human being should lead his life is given in this instruction manual, the glorious Quran. The glorious Quran. For peace to prevail on earth in Peacemakers. Tomorrow at 10.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 1 p.m. India on Peace TV. Most countries of the world ban bullying. They fight it in their schools and universities. A lot of us are being bullied differently every single day. Some come up to us and say, do this, while others say, don't you dare. Some say this is halal, halal, halal. while others say, nope, this is haram. 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 Are you confused? Are you confused? Do you feel lost? Join me in Umdat al-Ahkam, where with the grace of Allah, we will learn the proper knowledge from the Quran and from the Sunnah, which would help stop this kind of bullying. Join Asim Al Hakim in Umdatul Ahkam every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11:30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 6 a.m. India on Peace TV. Dialogue. 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 Discussion. 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 Debate. 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 Rebuttal. 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 Conclusion. Conclusion. Eliminate misconceptions about religion. Get enlightened. Witness Dr. Zakir Naik in a battle of words in Crossfire, next on Peace TV. Welcome back after this short break. Before this break, we were speaking about the magnificent work of Allah, all glory be to Him, the great design of our planet, to be an inhabitable planet. And we read this in Surah An-Naml, chapter 27, verse number 61, which reads, أَمَّنْ جَعَلَ الْأَرْضَ قَرَارًا Who has made for you the earth as a stable abode. None other than Allah, or glory be to him. وَجَعَلَ خِلَالَهَا أَنْهَارًا And he made rivers to flow therewith, within the earth many rivers and we said that this is an indirect 
reference to the water cycle around our own planet, without which all the water on the surface of this planet would have gone bad. And these rivers cut channels and passageways in the earth. This is the great the rock, constitute soil, concentrate valuable minerals, and finally flow into the seas and oceans. So Allah is showing his bounty upon us by running rivers on the surface of our planet. وَجَعْلَ لَهَا رَوَاسِيَةً A third bounty of Allah is the establishment of mountains on the surface of our earth because without these mountains, the continental masses we are living in would have been skipping in a very fast manner because actually these plates overlie a zone of semi-molten material, a dense material, and with the revolution of the earth, around its own axis, the continental plates would be skipping and running away at a speed that would not allow soil to accumulate, water to run, plants to grow, animals to live, humans to exist. It wouldn't allow a road to be constructed, a house to be built or anything. And that's why Allah is showing his great bounties on, by throwing mountains on the surface of our planet. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ حَاجِزًا And between the two seas, he created a barrier. He made a barrier. And we said in the previous three verses, we had two verses speaking about the two seas with the understanding of rivers and ocean, or rivers and seas. In the third verse, Surah Al-Rahman spoke about the meeting of marine water and marine water. In this fourth verse, is speaking about all meetings of water, fresh and saline, and saline and saline. And this is again one of the great bounds of Allah, who has multiplied many, many environments within the seas and oceans, and even the rivers, through variation in the physical, chemical characteristics of this fluid. And uh, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ حَاجِزًا And he has made a barrier between all these different types of waters, either a horizontal barrier or a vertical barrier. And these barriers play the role of distinguishing these great different environments from one another. And then the verse ends, أَإِلَاهٌ مَعَ اللَّهِ can, With all these bounties, with all these miraculous works of Allah, with all these miracles, with all these scientific facts in the Quran, can there be any other deity with Allah or glory be to him? And sadly enough, the main gateway for devil to distort people from their real path to their creator is the wrong assumption of, associ of associating others with Allah. And that's why the verse ends by saying, بَلْ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Really, most of those people who associate others with Allah, they do not know the reality and they are truly ignorant of the truth of the unity of Allah. Then we come to another character of seas and oceans, which the Quran has explained in a beautiful way. We said in the very early episodes, we started with you, that one of the living testimonies to the divine nature of the glorious Qur'an is that the verse would come in the context of an oath or a parable or an advice or an invitation to good morality. And if it refers to anything of this cosmos, it remains scientifically absolutely correct because this is the word of the Creator, and who would know the creation better than the one who has created it? We have two verses in Surah An-Nur. Surah An-Nur, the light, is the 24th chapter in the glorious Quran, and we have two verses, 39 and 40. The two verses speak 
about the deeds of the unbelievers, the deeds of those who associate others in worshiping Allah, the deeds of those who claim to be agnostics or to be atheists or to be unbelieving. The Quran classifies their deeds in two categories. The first category is a good deed that could be achieved by any of these non-believing categories. And the Quran says that any unbelieving human being who does a good thing on the surface of that planet will be rewarded for it in this world, but he will have no reward for it in the day to come, simply because he did not believe properly in the Creator, he did not exalt the Creator above all his creation, he fell in the great grave mistake of associating others with the Creator. So the Quran reads, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَعْمَالُهُمْ كَسَرَابٍ بِقِيعًا The unbelievers, their own deeds are like a mirage in a vast expanse of the desert. كَسَرَابٍ بِقِيعًا يَحْسَبُهُ الظَّمْآنُ مَأَ Any thirsty person would look at the mirage as if it is water and he will run towards it because he is too thirsty and he needs water. He runs towards it. And as usual, the more you draw closer to the mirage, the more it extends further away from you. So he will never reach it. كَسَرَابٍ بِقِيعَ يَحْسَبَهُ الظَّمْآنُ مَأَ حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَهُ لَمْ يَجِدْهُ شَيْئًا Even if he reaches that mirage, he will never find any water in it. وَوَجَدَ اللَّهَ عِنْدَهُ فَوَفَّهُ حِسَابًا then he will face Allah, he will face his Creator on the Day of Judgment, and he will be given his due account justly. Wallahu sari'u al-hisab. And Allah is swift in reckoning. This first verse speaks about any good deed a non-believing person would achieve on the surface of our planet. The second verse speaks about bad deeds of unbelievers. And the verse reads, أَوْ كَظُلُمَاتٍ فِي بَحْرٍ لُجِّي يَغْشَاهُ مَوْجُهُ مِنْ فَوْقِهِ مَوْجُهُ مِنْ فَوْقِهِ سَحَابِ ظُلُمَاتٌ بَعْضُهَا فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ إِذَا أَخْرَجَ يَدَهُ لَمْ يَكَدْ يَرَاهَا وَمَنْ لَمْ يَجْعَلِ اللَّهُ لَهُ نُورًا فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ نُورٍ The verse reads as such, Or is the light of the darkness in a vast, deep, turbid sea overwhelmed with waves, topped by other waves, topped with clouds, a multitude of overlying darknesses, one above the other. Whoever would stretch out his hand, he can hardly see it. For whoever Allah did not give light, there can never be any light for him. And look at the very precise scientific construction of this verse. Long before any human being knew anything about the facts it includes. The facts this verse includes are immense. First of all, it emphasizes that the bottoms of deep oceans, of turbid oceans, of oceans with high, with strong waves, are in absolute darkness. Nothing of light can penetrate and reach that zone. And this by itself is a scientific fact never disclosed to man until submarines were built. And when man went down to the bottoms of seas and oceans, and he realized that actually the bottoms of seas and oceans are buried in absolute darkness. And when man started to analyze the reasons for this absolute darkness. He found that the very first reason is clouds. And as we mentioned before, clouds expel away from us 49% of the total heat of the sun. Only 51% of that heat of the sun reaches the earth. Once this 
amount of heat reaches the surface of seas and oceans. It finds waves, which are known as surface waves. And these surface waves can either be wind-driven waves or tidal waves. Both waves play a very important role in stopping light from reaching the depths of deep oceans and seas. And because of this, we find the oceans and seas are actually buried in absolute darkness. And I think we came to the end of this episode. We shall continue discussing this wonderful verse in the glorious Quran in the coming episode. And until we meet, I would love to thank you for your careful listening and greet you in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, mercy, and blessings be with you all.